liberals garbage ship fiasco was a steaming heap of trash in more ways than the literal sense. You see, the liberals were so concerned with being perceived to be doing something about the garbage that they failed to get the proper paperwork to Chinese officials and then had no idea how the heck they were going to get the garbage back home, even after the garbage had already left the port of Manila. Remember the garbage ship? It was a ship of 69 containers of the absolute worst sort of Canadian garbage that was sent to Manila under the auspices of recycling, except it wasn't recyclable and lots of it was biohazardous. Some of it contained dirty adult diapers that had been sitting in the Manila heat and humidity rotting away for six years until Filipino President Duterte had enough of being a dumping ground for Canadian trash. Duterte declared a garbage war on us until we took it back, at one point even recalling the Filipino ambassador to Canada. This left the liberal Canadian government scrambling to get the garbage back home after ignoring it for years and making promises along the way. They were trying to save face in the international media. Trudeau's people, they're environmentalists, don't you know? They're not a bunch of jerks who just leave their garbage out of sight, out of mind in a developing country and then pat themselves on the back for being so very, very green. Now, you can see all of our coverage of the garbage ship and our journalistic mission to Manila to get the other side of the story at garbageship.com. Now, friends, our much-traveled trash did not have an easy trip home to British Columbia. Yesterday, I told you how the shipping containers were not cleaned the way the CFIA and the Canadian Border Security Agency required them to be before they were hastily repatriated and then incinerated. The junk journey was long. Our garbage went from the Port of Manila eventually to Taiwan and then off to Canada. But it wasn't that simple or straightforward. There really was no plan for the garbage except they had to get it out of Manila ASAP. The officials wanted to ship the waste via China, what's called a transshipment through another country's waters or ports. But China said no. Canadian officials even offered to pay a fee to China to get them to agree. The problem, as you'll soon see, was the ineptitude of the environment minister. The Chinese couldn't get a letter from McKenna's office saying Canada wouldn't stick them with the garbage in the event Canada would not be accepting the garbage at the port of Vancouver. And we have all the access to information documents to prove it. Let's get into them, shall we? On page 9, we can see that Canadian officials hadn't even confirmed that Taiwan would let them do the trans-shipping as they were loading the ship to leave the Philippines. Taiwan is the priority for trans-shipment. Discussions continue to confirm Taiwan's acceptance. Now, here's the part that shows how the Liberals turn every single dealing with China to rotting adult diapers. Page 66. Even as the ship was being loaded, officials didn't have confirmation that Taiwan would allow them to transship it. This email from the day before the garbage left the port says the route might remain quote unquote unconfirmed. On page 67, we find out China was actually the first choice of transshipment for the garbage, but the government of Canada could not get their act together. The Chinese were asking for further information to facilitate the transshipment, but remain silent on what is specifically required. It could be that the Chinese authorities do not have a recent letter from Environment and Climate Change Canada confirming that it will unconditionally accept the shipment in the port of Vancouver. This was requested by the Chinese in order to overturn the initial decision to refute the permit. Page 68, officials may have to pay China to let them ship the garbage through their waters. Should the route remain unconfirmed by the time of loading and should the transshipment take place in China rather than Taiwan, there will be a fee for Canada to pay, but it is still possible to load the containers without confirming the transshipment port. Just load the containers anyway, even if 
Canada didn't know exactly where those shipping containers were going. Is it really any wonder we still have two hostages held by China and Canadian farmers are caught up in a canola trade dispute? Our government couldn't even send the Chinese the right paperwork for rotting diapers. Let alone could they manage tenuous and dangerous foreign policy disputes where the lives of two men and the livelihoods of thousands of Canadian farmers hang in the balance. On page 71, China refused to allow the transshipment altogether, saying that McKenna's dirty diapers were too gross and hazardous, even for them. And again on that same page, page 71, the officials were looking to try Singapore waters as well. Ultimately, no one wanted the garbage. On page 72, the Liberals rushed to get the garbage out of Manila after ignoring their own promises to the Filipinos to deal with the trash for a year and a half. And we find out that any delays could now cost ten to $20,000 per day. Look at this. If a route is not confirmed by May 29th at noon, there is a possibility of delaying the ship by a few hours. Otherwise, there are delay costs of ten to $20,000 per day. But the chaos wasn't done once the garbage got to Taiwan, the Liberals didn't know what to do with it once it got back to Canada. Page 7 officials are asking for a plan on paper for what will actually happen with the garbage when it gets back to our shores. I think we need more detail than this on the status of the plans for when it arrives. Okay, that's fine. Except this email was sent after the garbage was already en route and docked in Taiwan to be loaded onto another ship. It was sent on June 7th. That was a full week after the garbage was on its way home. The garbage ship was an actual liberal dumpster fire. For Rebel News, I'm Sheila Gunreed. We ask accountability questions of the people in power that you just won't see done in the mainstream media. Now, one of the best ways to support our independent accountability journalism is to treat yourself to a Rebel subscription today. Just go to premium.rebelnews.com.